Hello and welcome to the Hunteria Museum and Art Gallery at the University of Glasgow. An important piece of 18th century amber work surprisingly turned up in Scotland. How it got there is a bit of a mystery, but it once belonged to the last king of Poland, Stanislav August Poniatowski, who was forced to abdicate in 1795 and later died, deeply in debt, in 1798. The cabinet is of immense historical value to Poland, as it contains engraved scenes and inscriptions relating to the most significant events from the life of Stanislav August. In the central recess of the cabinet is an earlier 17th century statue of the Virgin Mary with child. But now let's hear a little more about this cabinet from Dr Neil Clark, curator of the exhibition. This is the Stanislav August Poniatowski cabinet uh, that was uh, made for the last king of Poland. And uh, it came to Scotland through uh, some nefarious route. We're not entirely sure how it came to Scotland, but it was once owned by Lady Carment, who was the wife of Lord Carment, who was very famous in Glasgow, certainly, as, as the uh, court judge who dealt very severely with the slashing uh, razor gangs of Glasgow. Um, how he came to, to possess this, this piece is, is unknown, um, but it did, uh, was made round about the 1770s, uh, certainly after the time that uh, the Poniatowski um, king was abducted by the Bar Association of Poland, which is a, a group of a confederation of um, nobles in Poland who weren't too happy with the way he was governing. Um, so he was uh, kidnapped. And in this piece, you can actually see, if you look very closely, there's a number of little uh, engravings in the plaques, some relating to this kidnapping and the oath that he had to uh, say uh, to uh, enable his release. But there's, there's various sayings like, uh, um, uh, I'll be back and uh, another one saying uh, life from death and weak soldiers seek peace. Um, so it, historically it's a very important piece to Poland because it does have uh, a certain insight into the life of uh, the last king of Poland. Now he uh, eventually abdicated and went to, to Russia and uh, he basically died uh, penniless. Um, so perhaps this piece was sold on to, to help recover some of his debts and it ended up in, in the Vatican where one of the Carment family, presumably uh, Lord Carment's father, who was a banker uh, and also had dealings with the Vatican uh, as, as, uh, to help with the, the treasury there, um, but it may also have been Lord Carment himself who bought it in the Vatican because he was awarded uh, an honour by, by the Pope uh, in, in the 1950s and 60s, um, probably the 1960s actually, um, and obviously went to, to the Vatican at that time and may have picked it up at, uh, when, he, when he was there. Um, but there, there's no record of how it ended up in the Vatican and uh, at the moment there's no record of how it ended up in the Carment family. But in, in 1979, Lady Carment graciously donated this piece back to Poland, recognizing its significance to, um, as a historical piece to, to the Poles. And, uh, and it's been in the Marlborough Castle collections uh, since then. So this is really the first time that this piece has returned to Scotland. Curators at the Hunterian hope to find out more about the Cabinet's intriguing journey to Scottish shores before the exhibition ends on the 17th of April, when it returns to Marlborough Castle. Until then, it's bound to keep Polish and Scottish visitors captivated with its mystery and beauty. If you wish to know more about this Cabinet and many more interesting amber artefacts, please come along to the exhibition or visit us online at www.hunterian.gla.ac.uk forward slash amber A beautifully illustrated book, Amber, Tears of the Gods, is also available from our online shop, 
and Amazon. Thanks for watching.